gosh, what are we doing today? As you can see, we'll be looking at the Turner Artist Watercolor Paints. And um, this was long in the making because I've had these now for about a year. And I got these when I did my exploration into gouache because Turner does make an acrylic gouache and a gouache version. And I was curious about the watercolor paints and besides it was on sale at the time when I got it. And this is the 18 5ml set that I have. And I panned them in this. I panned them. I also had an extra tube of Turner paint. This was a transparent yellow paint. There you go. So I put these in here. I went through the trouble of making the swatch card and even put lines down. Is there a white here? Yes, there's a white. So I'll have to put my, um, just saw the paper too. My black, my black watercolor paper down. So what we're going to do, I think it's going to be similar to what we did for the etcher watercolor paints where I'm going to swatch them with you first and then I'm going to take it away, do some work with them, test them out, see what I can use them for and then bring them back to you in part two of this video. Okay, so I'm going to put down a strip of black watercolor paper. I doubt that this is gonna dry in time I really doubt it but I tried you wouldn't believe I've had this paper glue for about how many I've had it for about I don't know four years or so and I still haven't finished it it's not the paper's glue but guys it's mine I I am I'm using it like filters good to the last drop so I'm gonna put that there above the Chinese white I know for a fact that it's not going to dry in time so you'll just have to catch that one on the replay because it's not gonna dry in time so as I try to Where's my brush? Oh, it looks like it's this little thing here. Yeah, it is this one sticking out. Sorry. I trust you guys. I have been prepared for this for at least 10 months, even though it doesn't look that way. Anywho, the Turner watercolor paints are combined fine pure pigments with gum arabic. It's high light fast rating and superior transparency well balanced vibrancy and there's over 148 colors in this color range pigments are grounded fine without fillers blend with high gum arabic and wetting agents to produce vibrant bright smooth and free flowing consistency Okay, so there's, so like we said, there is 148 colors in the color range with 68 of them being pure pigments. Now I did contact the Turner company and ask them about this light fast claim they have. Any claim you make is a claim I can hold against you as one of my favorite art YouTubers like to say. And, um, oh, that rewets kind of fast. <laughs> And what they said is that they don't really do light fast testing per se. What they usually do is that they use universally known light fast. So like for instance, this here, uh oh, uh oh, spaghetti -o. This here is a PBK9. And if PBK9 pigment black nine is known to have a high light fast quality then this paint is light fast that's what they're telling me well that's what they told me in 2023 when I contacted the company <laughs> you have to excuse me guys not sure why I didn't get to these things in time 
Uh-oh. What's going on with you? Yeah, I see what's going on with you now. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm doing? Now, keep in mind, I've set this thing out for about 10 months. So the inks had a lot of time to dry. The only thing they didn't have a time to dry was the thing I just glued down. And I, I will not be swatching the white today. So I love how they re-wet though. I, I was amazed because like I, I set these out months ago. And they're re-wetting fine. Really, they are. The brush I'm using is the Princeton Snap Brush. A filbert number eight. Love this brush. Love the barrel of this brush. It really has a good barrel. Perfect for someone like me. I'm lifting it a bit because the glue seems to be leaking on the other side. But that's a me thing. That's another a glue thing. I just probably put too much glue down. Ooh, look how that just exploded. And I have it kind of like on a tilt. Okay, we're doing my famous yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre. It should be a constant color. And in Turner case, it looks like it is. It's really opaque. It really changed the consistency of that water. And it is made from the PY43. But interestingly, yellow ochre can also be made from PY42. So it can be made from two different pigments. And now we're going to sap green. And if you notice, I just basically, oh my goodness, look how these things are wet. I just basically just put the paint in the the little tabs I didn't try to mix them in or anything so you're seeing the whole swirly paint <laughs> I know right but look how those be wet and I love this color still haven't decided how I'm gonna test these out but I will test them out definitely we'll have to test them out on some kind of smooth paper and maybe test them out on this paper that I'm using is actually this Sargent Art watercolor paper. So definitely we're going to test them out on some cellulose based paper. And then, sorry, you guys are not even seeing what I'm doing. And then we're going to test them out on some 100% cotton paper that I have. So we're, we're definitely going to test these out on different types of paper. But first, we just want to see how they swatch. Look at this Thalo green. Oh my goodness. Now, Thalo green is not a color I normally see in sets. But really, it is a color I normally see in sets. Because most of the sets that I have have Thalo, gr Thalo green in it. And this is a Thalo green blue shade. So this probably can mix to make some excellent teal-like colors. Is it teal? Yeah, I think it's teal. And it also gave me a turquoise. A turquoise. And like I said, I haven't, all I did was put them in these tabs and left them here. <laughs> and they're just re-wetting perfectly. Oh my goodness. I thought these were like going to be hard like rock. And they're not. I'm already at the turquoise blue. Interestingly, this turquoise B is actually a PB28. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Change my brush. Just because I wonder if I could, if it re if rewettability would be fine with a softer brush. Now, this brush is a 100% squirrel hair brush. Okay, it's an art secret brush. Okay, I don't feel like I'm picking up enough paint with this brush that I did when I was using the uh, snap brush. Feels like I'm just glazing over the paint. But I really want to see how 
these pains will feel after being set for so long with a softer brush. Especially like how I'm halfway through. And actually, I really do like this brush for swatching. Now, which one did I do? I think this is Thalo. Did I miss one? Yeah, I think I missed one. <laughs> yeah, I missed one. I put ultramarine, put Mayan blue where ultramarine should have been. Just have to remember to make a switch. Now, this one re-wets excellently with the softer brush. The Mayan blue gave me a bit of it's a bit tacky with this brush. But the ultramarine blue did fine. Okay, this is the Mayan red. I have to remember to put a little switcheroo for that one with the Mayan blue and the um, ultramarine. My PB82, I don't think I've ever had a PB82 paint before. They don't seem to be... The yellow ochre exploded, but these don't seem to be exploding that much. I love explody colors, especially in watercolor. I love when it moves. I love using art secret brushes. They're one of my favorite bargain-friendly brushes. I believe they're Korean, but I buy them on AliExpress. And then for someone like me, it's a great budget-friendly brush. I Maybe mean, who can't afford a collection of silver, silver black velvet. Ooh. Oh, those are pricey brushes. Oh, I love this one. Good pigment flow, good paint flow. I love that flow. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, some of the paints I'm learning are a bit tacky. When I first put the wet brush on them, it's kind of like, you know, digging into melted cheese when trying to get water, water out, not paint out. But if you put sufficient water on it, you don't seem to have a problem. I just wanted to use the natural hair brush because, you know, water controlled. Sometimes the synthetic brush doesn't hold as much water as a natural hair brush does. And it seemed to me, it seems to me that these paints benefit from a natural hair brush because when I put the synthetic brush on, it was a bit tacky. And yes, it's also tacky with the natural hair brush, but it seems that I had to go back and reintroduce water onto my brush. Whereas with this, I just have to continue work it with the natural hair brush. And the initial tackiness just fades away. So that's a good thing. So I guess with this, it's an issue of water control. You'll have to remember that. Good thing I'm filming it too, because then I'll remember. Oh, this is really transparent. And this is not even their transparent yellow. This is a Mayan yellow. And it has an SY33 pigment code. Not sure what SY is. But that's the pigment color for that. Like I said, before I bought this set, I had one Turner color, which was the transparent yellow. So now I'm gonna put my brush in there and... You see what I'm talking about? Like, okay, I just splattered, but that's okay. You see what I'm talking about? Like, 
so this will benefit from natural hair brush I have to keep that in mind so when I'm doing my test with it I'll have to use my natural hair brushes with these and that's it I'm sure the testing part is not gonna be as long as this you guys got my thoughts one of them droplets went into the blue but I'm hoping it's the dry part of the blue <laughs> but yeah so I'm gonna put these to dry this is the color that I'm working with let me give you guys a nice view this is the color range I'm working with I'm gonna do the white when this have an opportunity to dry and then I'm gonna take this away I'm gonna do some work with it and then I'm gonna bring it back to you so um see you guys in part two okay welcome to part two guys and uh this is a combination of what we have learned what i'm doing first you see me going in there with a mixture of ultramarine blue and turquoise for the sky i'm using a art secret brush 999 i got that previously in a set i probably would have showed you guys it and these brushes are called a uh, mixed fiber brush it's supposed to be a blend of synthetic and real hair but really guys they feel like they're just synthetic mimic to be real hair and um but it's a really good brush for these i think in the end i'll probably discuss more about the brush with you because with these brushes i don't battle the tackiness that I battled with the other brushes. I mean, you can still feel it with these brushes, but because these brushes are a bit stiffer and still have that softness of real hair, you don't feel the tackiness as much and you're able to go in there with um, a lot of water and you're able to bring out paint. The one thing I do notice about these paint is that they don't really pick up a lot in the brush. It's kind of like... I'm not saying they're not bright. I'm not saying they're not colorful. What I am saying is that they don't, they, you use a lot of paint. That's what I'm saying. You use a lot of paint. Actually, I'm almost, I'm out of my transparent yellow and I'm also almost out of my gamboge and my permanent yellow because I use a lot of that. And I'm almost out of my Mayan blue, my Maya blue because I use that also. And my white because again you know I used a lot of white for the Easter piece and you use a lot of paint you know and I tried three different types of brush this one works for me I couldn't use the Princeton snap brush I couldn't use the real hair brush because it wasn't working for me I was battling battling with these paints also the paper that i'm using for this illustration is actually fluid 100 cellulose hot press paper because i also tried it on 100 percent cotton paper i tried it on cellulose paper as you would have seen for the easter special the fabriano 1264 and it worked well honestly guys it did work well on the fabriano 1264 and the other cellulose paper I did a little tester on, which is the Pacan 140 pound paper weight cellulose paper. It also worked well on those, but somehow I think the sizing in my 100% cotton paper is kind of missed because it gave me some trouble. It's the same trouble that I had with the previous painting that I did, which was the etchers i think where it, it looks like the paint was resisting the paper i had trouble with those um i'm trying this new technique i probably already did it already but i i'm just talking about it where i'm trying to do a blue yay i got that from becca hilburn she is an amazing artist and she usually for her shadows and stuff she likes to go in there first with a blue an ultramarine mixed blue covering and then she goes back in there with shadows but i'm not doing going back in there with shadows i'm just doing the blue yay and that will be called my shadows i'm just trying new techniques i think this is a great time for exploring new techniques 
techniques and the blue yay is one of them i really want to start exploring more and for this i wanted the wings to be kind of transparent but at the same time i didn't want to put the brown of the tree into it i just wanted to show some form of separation the hair i originally went in there with a very light mix of mayan blue and transparent yellow but then i decided to add the thalo green to that and darken it a bit and i think that really adds to the hair color and for the butterflies i wanted them to stand out at the same time i wanted them to be a part of the mixture so instead of putting them green I put them as purple and pink, you know, just to kind of complement the piece a little bit to show that, yeah, but I didn't want the purple to be too bright. I think I made the bigger butterfly a little bit bright after when you see the color that I added there, but I wanted it to kind of look like, you know, they're still a part of the piece and separate at the same time. This was for me a lot of fun guys. Um, I'll talk to you more about it in the end. Okay guys, um, I guess for the last five minutes or so, I just want to talk about, kind of recap everything when it comes to the Turner paints. I talked about the brushes, how the Princeton snapped. This one here, this is the one that I use. This one guys did not work for me. Um, I also talk about the natural hair brushes that I use. These are from the Art Secret 777 line. These guys did not work for me either. Come on, focus on the brush. Yeah, these did not work for me either. And the only brush that worked for me with this was these brushes here. These are the brushes I'm talking about from Art Secret. These are their 999 and I used all three of them in this piece. And these work for me perfectly. I also want to talk about the paints a little bit here. This is the box. I showed you the box in the beginning, but I did not show you the paints in them. And interestingly enough, I do have to refill my paints. Here is my paint pans. As you can see, I'm actually out of Mayan yellow, permanent yellow. My transparent yellow is finished. So I used up a lot of paints. And it's not like I was painting very big pieces. And these are the paint tubes they come in. These are their 5ml representation. A little screw cap here. It, so it, it was... They are nice paint tubes. But the thing about it is... And I have an 18 color representation with a extra one where is a transparent yellow let me show you that one okay so here is a representation of their transparent oh something got on my hand their transparent yellow that i have this is a 15 ml represent representation when you compare it to the 5 ml one you can see how big a tube this is and but the paint you kind of use up a lot of paint so yeah i, I think you know if you want Turner to be your more permanent brand, you may have to go with a um a bigger tube. Now I also did it with some papers. I did it on a couple cellulose paper, including this one, which is from Sergeant Art. I also did it on this paper here. This is the book that I made. Let me bring you guys out a bit. The book that I made for the um for my testing. And this is where I kind of test and swatch the the my rendition of what i would call a primary set as i tested the mayans and those were very transparent very very transparent colors i put my notes here also um i also tested the permanent colors with the thalo blue and i kind of like this combination and then i tested the Gamboge, a more warmer set with the Gamboge, the Pyro Red, and the Ultramarine Blue. And I tried to black it out a bit for the cat to see what kind of black these colors produced. And for the this one here, now I'm thinking the sizing in this um, is, is kind of weighing because I get that resist effect, but I think it's more of a sizing issue versus a paint issue. Um, as you can see, the colors are very bright. They're very beautiful. They're gorgeous. It wasn't the paints. It was easy to use with them. But for me, I was using the natural hair brushes. And I think that was where I ran into complications. 
and then finally we are at the piece that I just did on the hot press paper and I do need to work on hot press more because as you can see I have a lot of streaky lines but because I worked on the in the sketchbook with water-based markers I'm kind of becoming more okay more tolerable of streaks and brush marks than I was before but all in all this was an interesting experience you have seen all the things I've thrown at these paints what do you think of them you've seen how I work with them in my style maybe the way I choose to work that's the reason why it that these Turner paints didn't match with me and synthetic brushes well the Turner snap brushes and the the natural hair brushes maybe that's the reason it didn't match with me but maybe it's a little different for me for you guys let me know in the comments below if you have ever worked with these paints before what was your experience like if there is any tips you can give me on how i could best tackle that tackiness of these paints thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey and as always stay safe stay blessed and i'll see you in the next one bye